Hello again, good to see you. Um, I often end up uh, chairing or moderating sessions and conferences and seminars and so on. Um, and if, uh, I'm sure many of you will have been to these things and you will know that at the very beginning the chairman stands up and welcomes the audience, reminds you to turn your phones off, uh, tell you, tells you where lunch is going to be and then points out the emergency exits. Um, I did this once and forgot to mention where the emergency exits were. Uh, there was somebody from the health and safety executive in the audience and they collared me at, uh, at break and said, don't forget to tell them where the emergency exits are, uh, which is fair enough. Um, the other thing that the health and safety executive and uh, other similar agencies around the world are very bothered about um, because it's the sort of thing that keeps on killing and injuring people um, is extraordinarily basic. I mean, we work in such a high hazard industry that you would think we've got this sorted out now, but a lot of the injuries and the occasional deaths um, in the world of dangerous goods are caused not by dangerous goods themselves, but by people falling over, by tripping on things, by slipping on spills, or by falling from height. And it, throughout the dangerous goods supply chain, there are plenty of opportunities for people to find themselves working at height. Now, I was grateful at the uh, recent ITCO members meeting in Amsterdam <coughs> that uh, Evert de Jong, uh, who's uh, managing, joint managing director at the European Chemical Transport Association, um, gave a very lucid uh, presentation on the dangers of working at height. Uh, he was specifically at this point talking about uh, working on the tops of tank containers, but uh, it, it goes for uh, all sorts of other things. Um, and it reminded me actually of when I was a, a much younger man and I worked for a, a time um, at a motorway service station in the north of England. And one of my responsibilities was to take uh, fuel deliveries and uh, one, of the, uh, one element of that was to clamber on top of the fuel tanker and dip the tanks. And uh, like I say, I was much younger then and, and considerably more limber. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, a terribly difficult job. Um, but there were times when I, was, uh, I felt a little unsteady up there. Um, not least the time that tanker driver asked me to hold on while he moved the, the vehicle a bit because uh, he wasn't in the right position. Um, but it never occurred to me at that time that there was any protection available for me while I was on top of the tanker. Nowadays, of course, there is. And uh, as Ebert was saying in his presentation, the, uh, the best uh, way of preventing falls from the tops of tank containers is not to require anybody to go on the top in the first place. Uh, which is uh, all well and good, but um, they're not all uh, set up in that way. Um, but if you are going to have to go onto the top of the tanker to have a, a, a cage, uh, basically, which prevents you from falling off, um, a simple handrail, he says, is, is not enough. It's just, it's just there to steady you. Um, and it seems very sensible. And one wonders why there are um, facilities where uh, tanker drivers or tank container drivers are, um, have to effectively get up on top of the tank um, in order to um, take receipt of product. Um, why are these facilities not providing a safe working environment? You could make, you could easily make an argument that they're contravening health and safety at work regulations, whichever apply, depending on what territory you're talking about. Um, it's somewhat easier to see why the uh, logistics provider in this relationship um, doesn't make a fuss because um, they need the business. <clears throat> but then they too are responsible for the safety of their employees while they're at work. And really, if they find out that their employees are being asked to undertake 
uh, unsafe actions in the course of their work, surely they bear a, a legal responsibility as well in the case of an accident. And, uh, and these accidents do happen. I'm sure we all have, perhaps in the back of our head, an idea of how we would like to end our life, which is probably lying in bed surrounded by our loved ones. Uh, where we don't want to end it is lying on our back in a puddle on the, on the concrete or asphalt uh, with a cracked head uh, at, a, at a fuel depot. So I think it behoves logistics providers to get tough on this. Um, and for those facilities that don't offer a safe working environment, it behoves you as well to invest in it. Um, that's my thought for this week. Good to see you, as ever. Um, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.